Welcome into the 541 Fisherman YouTube channel, everybody. On today's episode, I am gonna be showing you guys like how to rig up for a like fall Chinook. Now this would work for just about anything, but it's fall Chinook season right now. So I'm gonna kind of be showing you guys how to rig up a bobber setup for that. Bobber fishing is kind of like a main staple kind of thing for fall Chinook. People troll for them in the bays, people throw spinners, people throw twitching jigs, but I'm gonna be showing you guys like, I guess how to set up a bobber setup. Uh, we're gonna kind of go over like rod reel, and then what you guys are gonna need and then how to tie that up so that you guys can be effective on the river. After I give you guys the tutorial, there's gonna be just a small clip from when I went fishing today with uh, my buddies Shane and Frank. I had already caught a fish up river with both of them. So if you guys wanna go check that out, uh, that's also on my channel. That was like a week ago. But we went out today and we caught, well, we, Shane caught a pretty nice Chinook and then I caught a decent cutthroat on the exact setup I'm gonna be showing you guys. So it is gonna be proven to be effective and I hope you guys enjoy this. Please do hit that subscribe button, leave a thumbs up on my video, hit that little notification bell so that you guys don't miss a future upload. But let's go ahead and roll into this and hopefully this guy, this helps you guys. So first thing we're gonna kind of talk about is your rod and reel setup. Um, this is like my kind of go-to choice. So this, a Johnny Morris signature reel. Dude, it is super windy outside. It's freaking crazy. Um, this reel is loaded with 40, 40 pound Power Pro Super Slick line. A lot of people ask what the difference is between normal Power Pro and Super Slick. So, Super Slick has like a kind of like oily coating, or I guess you could call it feel. Um, it almost feels like fly line backing kind of thing, like it's really smooth. Uh, the only purpose for that is so when it goes through your eyelets, it doesn't wear down your eyelets. Other than that, it's no different. And then obviously original Power Pro is a little more coarse to the touch. Um, I have this reel paired up on my Okuma Cascade Pro. This is a 15 to 40 pound rod. Um, it's 10 foot, six inches long. It's got a pretty heavy action on it, but it does have that lighter tip. So you know, when I'm fighting that fish, it has a lot of give from, you know, like halfway up the rod to the tip, there's a lot of give. So when that fish is head shaking, it's not just you know stiff as a board, which is what I personally like. There's quite a few different floats on the market. And like, if you have your own personal preference, that's like, that's awesome. Two of like the kind of main staple floats that we have is like arrow floats and bow max. So that's a comparison difference of those. I personally use arrow floats. Um, sometimes I find these floating down the river and who doesn't like free river booty? So pretty much this is gonna be kind of my go-to float that I'm gonna show you guys for this demonstration. But if you guys have something different or you wanna go cheaper, the Bomac are cheaper than the Aero Float, like in the store. Next, we're gonna kind of talk about hooks. So there's a lot of different hook brands on the market. You know, you see like your Eagle Claw, Owner, Gamagatsu. Um, I'm trying to think like, I know Mustad makes some okay hooks. Um, but personally, I use Gamagatsu Octopus hooks. Bro, did you see how buggy is like trying to check it out? Um, these are two watt. That's kind of my go-to. I have quite a few packs of these. Um, when I go to the river, I usually carry one pack and a couple bobbers with me. I don't like to carry all my gear. And then you're going to just need some like weights. Um, so I personally use Dave's Tangle Free Weights paired up with a three-way swivel. Um, kind of show you guys that, see if we can kind of pick that up. That is a three-way swivel. Um, and I'll show you guys how to like rig that up, you know, on your line in a second. And then you're going to need a corky. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but two small little beads like that. Now you can buy, you know, six corkies is like a dollar and a bunch of those beads is like $2. And then we're going to be needing some tea stops. These are bead tea stops. Uh, these are made by BNR. So I'll show you guys why you're going to need those. And personally, I use them because they, when you trim the end off, like I'm gonna show you guys how to do, it's a longer bobber stop and they don't rip as easy and they don't slide as easy. So you hold your depth like a little bit more accurate. And then for line, I personally use 30 pound Seaguar STS, which is salmon trout steelhead. Um, it's 100% fluorocarbon. Fall Chinook aren't picky. A lot of people try to tell you that they're picky fish. They aren't, they literally don't care. I use 30 pound line in gin clear water. And as you can see, we've already caught fish this year. Um, I didn't have my YouTube channel last year during salmon season, or I would have showed you one of the 150 salmon I caught last year, literally on this spool of line. I've had this spool of line for four years and it just, it, it keeps on going for me. I'm like just about out though. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our, this is our 40 pound line. You guys can see that there. We're gonna set this down really quick and I'm gonna show you guys just really quick on how to like trim these 
speed stops to make them bobber stops. Um, a big pack of these, you get like, I think it's like a 40 pack is like $8, which is pretty fair because it's like $4 for a 10 pack of bobber stops. What you gotta do is take your handy dandy braid scissors. And if you can pick that up on the end of that thing there, there's the little lip where your bead goes. I'm sure if you know what these are, then you know. If you don't, there's a little stopper on, there's a little like lip on the end of that there. You're gonna take your scissors, go just inside of that lip. Don't squeeze harder, you'll cut the little metal wire that's in there. Squeeze it just a little bit and just pierce, just barely pierce that rubber. Take your hand, hold the flat side, take your other hand, grab that little lip and just give it a pull. Okay, so now you are left with that little bobber stop. Now, that is what you originally had. All right, so now that you've taken, you've trimmed the little end off your uh, T-stop there, you're gonna go ahead and take your braid. Doesn't matter what size you use, I say 40 just because that's personally what I use. Now you can use whatever you want. You're gonna take it and on the end of that little wire, there's a little hole. You're gonna put that braid right through the hole. You're gonna take it like the end that you stuck through, you can see it's through there. You're gonna take it and just kind of pinch it back against itself there. You're gonna take, hold it between your fingers, grab your stop, and then pull, 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 pull it on your line, slide it, and what it does is it pops it off. Now you have that little bobber stop on your line, and it works perfect, and they're really, really hard to slide. So what happens with the like little rubber ones that you can buy, like the Bomac ones, um, they're a lot thicker diameter, so they're really hard on your eyelets on your rod, and they slide super easy up and down your line. Uh, you find like with the cheap Amazon ones and stuff, they rip and they slide easy up and down your line. I never have any problems with these and I've bought one pack of T-stops like three years ago and I still have all of them. Next thing you're gonna do is those little beads that I showed you guys, you're gonna take one of them here out of your little box or wherever you have it, little green bead guy there, and you're gonna just put it through your line like so. So I threaded that there on my line. You're just gonna let it fall to your bobber stop. You're gonna take your handy dandy corky, uh, preferably something bright, like I just have a watermelon corky. Any color works, any size works. I like the bigger the better. You're gonna take that, you're just gonna put the line through the corky, like you did with that bead, so it's on your line. Let it fall to your bobber stop. You're now gonna take your float, whatever kind of float you have. Uh, this is personally, this is a three quarter ounce float, which I'll show you guys why I have a three quarter ounce float. You're gonna take your line, and what I personally do is I do the little secret where you put your line in, and then you kind of hold a loop and you suck on the end of it and it comes through. Because sometimes when your line's wet, it gets stuck in there, and it's just kind of hard to get through. Now that you have your float on, you have your bobber stop, bead, corky, float, you're now gonna take another bead because what's gonna happen is that bobber's gonna slide down and try to go over your knot. But if there's another little bead in between your knot and that swivel, and your bobber, I guess, it won't get stuck and it'll just you know freely slide. So we have that bobber, drop it down, or you have the bead, drop it down to the bobber. You're gonna now take one of your little three-way swivel guys. And if you guys wanna check that out really quick, it has two tie-ins and then just a little snap swivel on the end of it, which makes it super easy for ch in, you know changing in and out weights. You're gonna then take that three-way swivel tied onto your 40 pound braid or whatever pound braid you have. Uh, I personally do eight wraps like this. I take that tag or my end there, I go through the loop and I'm pinching that line still with my finger and I've created another loop. I'm gonna go back through, grab it. And what I like to do is I like to pull and actually cinch that loop and then pull and it will slide right down and create a perfect knot. Go ahead and trim your tag end off. Set it in your box so you don't litter. And then I'll go ahead and show you guys my egg loop really quick. And then we'll go ahead and tie it on. Okay guys, so I've cut like roughly, like probably a 24 to 36 inch liter. Uh, this is that 30 pound fluorocarbon that I showed you guys earlier in the video. I have my two out Gamagatsu octopus hook um, in red. I personally like red for you know, when I'm throwing eggs. I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna grab kind of near the end of that line. And then you're gonna take your hook and hold it in your opposite hand. 
and you're gonna put it point side down like that and you're gonna take the line and you're gonna go through that eyelet. You're gonna then grab the eyelet with the hand that you just threaded the line through with, take the other hand and take that line and you're gonna just grab it while grabbing the shank of your hook and you're gonna pinch it so you can hold it there. Take your other hand again and that line that's going through your eyelet, you're gonna take it and you're gonna go against, back against that eyelet and do wraps. You're gonna wrap it, that's one, two, three, four, five. You're gonna then take it with your two fingers and pinch it. Now you can pinch it however you want, whatever works best for you, this is what works for me. You're gonna take that other end of your line that you're holding with your hand. You're gonna take it and you're gonna go back through the eyelet, but the opposite direction of where you first went through. You're gonna take and you're gonna switch that line that you were holding with your hand, drop it, and just like you did when you first threaded that line through, you're gonna grab it with your hand and you're gonna pinch that little tag that you put through and that new line with your hand again while holding tension on this. This is the line that we just were wrapping. You're gonna now take it and do double the amount of wraps. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We do five more because that's what we initially did. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five. That makes 10 total. Now I don't recommend doing this, but grab it with your teeth, pull it through just a little bit, and then just go ahead and pull that line through. Sometimes it gets a little jumbled up on itself just because it's such big line and it kind of gets kinked. But you're gonna go ahead and just pull that line through, keep pulling, and then you're gonna get it to your loop and just pull as hard as you can and it's gonna cinch up. And now you've created, you can take your line and push it back through, you've created an egg loop. You're just gonna go ahead and take, there's that little tag end right there that you are pinching and you're just gonna take it and just nip it off with some scissors. You're now gonna go ahead and take this little egg loop that you created. You're gonna take your swivel and your whole bobber setup that you tied on your main line off your rod and you're gonna go on that other opposite end of that. You're gonna put it through. And then for this, I do the same knot I did for the braid, except when I put my thumb, I like to put my thumb through. It just helps create that loop. I'm only gonna do four. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna then take that end. I'm gonna put it through. Then I'm gonna take it, grab it, and put it back through the loop, just like I did with my braid. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it somewhat tight like this. Wet my knot, wet my line, and then cinch it right down. And you can see, as I'm pulling it, it creates a perfect knot every single time. You're gonna take your tag end, trim it off, put it in the box so you're not littering. You're gonna do just a quick recap of everything. Got your bobber stop, bead, corky, bobber, bead, swivel, leader down to my egg loop. You're now gonna use that little swivel there. Take your three quarter ounce Dave's Tingle free weight, you're gonna pop open that little snap. Bam, you're gonna slide it through that loop, close it up, and that's it. That literally is a bobber and egg setup. So when it's floating, it's gonna look like this, and then your egg loop is gonna be suspended down, and you're gonna have you know, your big glob of eggs like this floating through the river. Now, I personally like doing it this way. Um, you can use little inline leads like this uh, with a swivel on each end instead of doing it that way. But what happens with these is they get hung up in the rocks a lot more. Um, and obviously it has the name, you know, it's a Dave's Tingle Free. And so when this is sliding through the rocks, it likes to slide through better. If I accidentally find a big boulder in the middle of a run, you know, that maybe I didn't know was there or I'm on a river I haven't fished before and I'm not like 100% sure about how that drift is. So just kind of one more look here at our little bobber rig that we got. Got that hook looped down onto our rod. Got our 10 foot six rod and reel. Um, now kind of with that, with that, uh, you don't need a 10 foot six rod. That's just my own personal preference. Um, I would definitely say for float fishing, use anything that's over eight foot six. Um, it's just gonna help. So when you're sitting there, you know, and you're fishing out in that drift, you're gonna be able to lift that rod and mend that line, you know, roll that line. So it's, I guess like, what would that be? Like per perpendicular or whatever, just in a line with you to that bobber so you don't have this big giant loop downriver or 
for some reason a big giant loop up river so when your bobber goes down you can give that nice straight hook set um that's why i like a really long rod so i'm literally i'm like when my arm's in the air it's only like seven feet tall but now i just added a whole nother like nine feet to my rod so i'm like 15 feet in the air and i can go like this and mend my line all the way across the river now if i only have an eight foot six rod i just lost two whole feet of mending ability um that's just my own personal preference but i really hope that you guys enjoyed this let's go ahead and jump back to the river this morning and then i'll show you guys just those little clips of what we got and then i guess that's gonna do it honestly <laughs> do you see it guys i just hooked something what is it can you see it it's right in front of you is it a jack no way it wrecked it though it's a is it a squawfish I, it's like i think it's just a cutty what is it i'm pretty sure it's just a cutty Yeah, look at that, guys. It's nope, nope. You think so? That was cool, though. Thanks for playing, bud. Sorry about the foggy camera, guys. Literally right when I stopped recording, Shane just hooked one, guys. I'll get the net. Gosh dang it. Why is that always my luck, though, dude? Yeah. <laughs> is it a coho? Okay, uh, so Frank, I'm gonna give you, oh my God, this is so deep right here. I'm gonna give you my phone. Okay, hold on, Shane, fight it out for a few minutes. <laughs> well, what is it? No way. Screw it. Oh. Here, let me try to get right here with you. That's the goal, look how shiny it is. There's no way that's a Chinook, it's way too shiny. Ready? Dude, it's a Chinook. That's a freebie. Dude. Oh freebie my God. Chinook, that's a Jack. Dude, that's a blinger. All right, let's go up here. All right, guys. So Shane just caught that fish. I'm kind of an idiot. And I literally, okay, I was recording and I was like, no, you guys probably saw. I pressed the stop record button and then I'm like, damn, I should have kept recording like in my brain, dude. I was sitting here thinking to myself, whatever. But uh, yeah. This is the fish that Shane caught. It literally has a sea lice on it, or one. What do you call it, like a lie? Is it a lie or is it a lice? I don't know what you call it. It's got sea lice on it. That's Look, here, saying. turn it towards me. Purple. It's literally like purple back when you turn it. <laughs> so, you do like, turn it towards the camera. It's, it's so chrome, it's reflecting. I huh. was confident it was a coho. Yeah, and we all thought it was a coho, but. Definitely just a little Chinook guy. So that's cool. That's a perfect little like eater size in there, freebie fish. So that's sick. But uh, yeah, fish bump, if you can get it. You know, I really hope that you guys enjoyed those clips. Um, I do really appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate all the support that we've been getting lately. Um, it means a lot to me. And then I really hope that you guys did go click that little notification bell and turn on all notifications. Um, I'm going to be able to bring you guys a lot more content this year. Like I had said in the beginning, um, I started my youtube channel literally on december 7th of 2020 so it hasn't even been a year yet um big shout out to the almost 2,000 subscribers i honestly do deeply appreciate all of you guys um anybody that watches my video whether you like it or don't like it um i appreciate you honestly uh, i like all the feedback i like all the positive feedback so i think we're going in the right direction um I like making these little how-tos for you guys because I like to help you guys out as much as I can. Be checking out for my future videos. I love you guys. Stay fishy. Good luck fishing next time you go out. Uh, drop a comment on this video if you guys go out and this helps you guys. Uh, you know, come back and drop a comment. So I'll see you guys' faces later. Peace out, everybody.